Welcome to the Fitness Oracle, where we have real conversations with real people, just like you, with real stories, just like yours. And this is one of their stories. I am your host, John Katavos. My guest today is Greg Birch from Delta Life. He is a sales entrepreneur and a veteran U.S. officer of the U.S. Army with a winning sales mindset. Greg has broken records in the insurance industry and now coaches other insurance agents to achieve higher levels of sales. His military background and strong leadership skills have helped him lead teams to success in combat and in business. And he uses this experience in coaching and public speaking engagements to help organizations and entrepreneurs tap into their people and drive everyone's potential to the next level. Greg has honed a mindset of abundance and success that has helped him achieve his goals. And he has coached others on developing a winning mindset that can help them reach new levels of success. As the host of the Be The Difference podcast, Greg brings on guests to talk about his sales, leadership, mindset, and marketing techniques to help entrepreneurs with years of experience in sales, leadership, podcasting, and coaching. Greg is a dynamic and engaging public speaker who can inspire and motivate audiences to achieve their goals. Now, before we get into this episode, I do want to warn the listeners here, there may be, um, Greg does get into his and really deeply into his story of uh, depression and what happened when he came back from Serp for, with his uh, with one of his ex girlfriend, I guess ex girlfriends, and um, just be forewarned that there is a little bit of a something that he did um, that almost com- made him commit suicide. So uh, just be forewarned, um, it is a powerful story. Uh, I didn't want him to stop. Uh, but because of time constraints, I, we had to um, make it more of a conversation. Uh, he, this story is amazing. It's it's so it's so mind blowing. It's uh, I don't want to ruin it for you. I want you to listen to it. I know you guys are going to be um, enthralled by this story. Uh, and the man that came out of it is next level. And I know we all have it in us. We all have that in us when we're in that darkness for us to be able to get out of that darkness. And when we get out of it to become the man that is next level. So without further ado, have a listen. But before you go, I want to ask you if you're ready to take your life to the next level, join the fitness Oracle newsletter today and get exclusive access to a range of exciting perks as a subscriber you'll be the first to know about our our new episodes and you'll get early access before they're released to the public. But that's not all. You'll also receive a one-on-one phone call with me where where we'll discuss your fitness goals, life goals, and business goals and how we can help you achieve them. And you'll get access to our free, free private community where we hold community calls on a weekly basis to talk about the episodes and how you're applying the lessons to your life. And that's not all. As a member of our exclusive community, you'll get access to some exciting programs that we are launching so you can continue your journey toward health and wellness. Join the Fitness Oracle newsletter today and get started on a journey towards a happier, healthier you. Greg, welcome to the show. What's going on, John? Happy to be here, brother. Um, it's great to have you on. We're we're gonna we're gonna try to keep this conversation to an hour because I have a feeling like even in the uh, the pre call, you and I we could have gone on for like three four hours, like no problem. Oh yeah, there was, <laughs> we, it was like an instant connection. We're like, are we brothers? 
<laughs> we probably are from different mothers. It's all good though. So how's how's everything on your end? Everything uh going well, man. Going well. Um so I I when we had talked, I told you I I had launched my uh my coaching company um just about three months ago and it's been doing fantastic. And I've been coaching people for a long time previous mm -hmm. to that. But it was it was just people that reached out to me that are like, dude, show me what you're doing. And I was like, Yeah, I can do that, you know, and I can I can help you out. And then finally I was like, Man, there's a lot of people that need help. So I uh, launched my coaching company and it, I've been I've been incredibly busy. But you ever like been so busy, but you don't feel like it doesn't grind you down? Like I, yes. I work from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, but I don't feel exhausted. Like I love what I'm doing. And so it's been it's been a it's been a wild ride, but it's been great. That's awesome. Um, yes, I have had that we, when the uh, podcasting first started. I was like, I was like going all crazy and like this is awesome. Like I would wake up at five a.m. Like I, I, I joke. Like I traded my nine to five for my five to nine. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what got you interested in this line of work that you're doing right now with coaching? Man, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> um. So, so basically I, I had, I had suffered from PTSD, uh, so I'm prior military and I served in the army for 11 years and deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. And, um, while I was in the military, uh, I was married and my wife, my ex-wife and I, we have four kids together and it was in, um, 2009 on my first deployment that she actually, she cheated on me with another man. And I found out about it <clears throat> and in 2014 and, uh, I had an affair to, to get her back. You know, I was upset and, and, uh, which by the way is, is not right. So I just want to caveat with that. <laughs> I, I was in the wrong there. So, um, I told her it, it ate at me and I told her about it. And so we ended up going to counseling, didn't work out. We ended up separating and, um, uh, I, I, I fell into depression because I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a people person. Like, uh, I love having people around me. I'm super extroverted. If I could talk to people in the bathroom and be normal, I would do it. I guess like, what's up, bro? <laughs> nice watch. So, uh, I, I like, I, it feeds me, you know, and I, I went from, you know, having a big household with four kids coming home every day with just like the kids screaming like daddy, daddy, daddy playing with me to, to coming home and it just being empty silence, nothing. And, uh, dude, it was, it was depressing. It was like, it was probably one of some of the worst times of my life. And, uh, with that, with the PTSD, I just started spiraling. I started losing control. And, um, I, as a, as a young kid to back it up as a young kid, I was, I was a scrawny and, and pretty ugly kid. I was picked on a lot. I was beat up, you know, um, I'm, I'm a tall guy. I'm six, seven. So I stand out. And, um, I think because I stood out and I was so scrawny, like I was, I was like, laughably thin, you know, like people would see me and, and have to comment on it kind of thing. And, um, um, it was, it was really bad for my self-esteem. And, uh, when I, when I got with my wife, I've, I, to be honest, I got with anybody I could, cause I never thought I was going to be with anybody. I was, I, I was like, <laughs> I thought I was going to be alone <laughs> to be honest. Cause I had such bad self-esteem issues and, uh, she, her and I were together in college. And now I'm in my thirties and, uh, you know, I, I'd gotten bigger cause I, I deploy, I, one of my first deployments when I started lifting and, and I got big and, um, all of a sudden now I'm alone again and I hadn't been alone for most of my adult life. And I had this hole that I had to, this void in my, in my soul that I was trying to fill. And so I filled it by chasing women and, um, and, and just with sex, with alcohol and, it was, it was this vicious cycle of chasing after women, never being single because I couldn't, I couldn't live with it. You know, um, from the time I got divorced in 2015 until the end of 2020, literally December, 2020, I had not spent longer than three days single. Yeah. Impressive. Like, like, it, it, I, like usually within 24 hours, I met another person and when I met them, like I was attached Cause I, I had these, I had these issues. Right. And it was, <clears throat> it, I was always with the wrong people. 
and, and, and my therapist had a really good, you know, I went through therapy and therapist had a really good explanation of it. She said, you know, think about when you pick your partner, think about like, it's uh, like all the qualities that you look for in a partner is like the dresser, or like drawers in a dresser. And each drawer has a different article of clothing. So like one drawer will have socks, another drawer will have your underwear, next drawer will have your shorts or your bottoms, next drawer will have your shirts or tops. And she said, and now all these qualities are like emotional connect connectivity, mental connectivity, physical attraction, and then like wanting the same things in life, right? And she said, you're basically picking like one or two of those drawers because it's just like, it's always physical attraction. And it might be mental connectivity, but we don't want the same things in life and we're not spiritually connected. Or it might be like spiritual connection, but we're not mentally connected. We don't want the same things in life. It was always like one or two of those. She was like, that's like going outside with just your socks and underwear every day. Does that make sense? And I was like, wow, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And so um, in in 2018, I had a, I had a, a girlfriend that uh, she she had moved in with me very quickly. She had a daughter and she, uh, I was, I felt trapped because I didn't really want to be with her, but I felt obliged now to be with her because she had moved from one, from another state to come be with me because mm -hmm. I, I had moved from state to state and she followed me and, uh, her daughter moved in with her. And for all intents and purposes, I was now this kid's dad. And now I was like stuck. And I was like, man, I have to be with her now, but I didn't want to, <laughs> but at the same time, I didn't want her to leave. Because then I'd be alone. It was like this weird conundrum, right? And and so um, in, in May of 2018, we got this big fight. That was over the dumbest thing in the world. And uh, like always, we get in a fight. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, I, I turned immediately to alcohol. And I started, I started just drinking Jack. I, my drink of choice was Jack Daniels. And I... I would drink it on the rocks with a splash of water and I would just sip that bad boy. And just like, like it was like, it was Coke, you know, and I would just keep pouring, keep pouring. And that day between 10 o'clock in the morning and 5 PM, I drank almost half a, half a handle of Jack. I was like the big old, like, wow. like it was, I drank a lot. And, um, and it hit me at five. I was like, man, I gotta go to work. Cause I, I was an insurance agent and I would have, I'd have appointments with clients in the evenings. And so I was like, well, I got an appointment coming up. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to this appointment. So I stumble upstairs and she like locked herself in our bedroom. So she lets me in and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I got to get dressed for this appointment. She's like, you're not going appointment. You're drunk. And I'm like, bam, fine. Like I'm fine. And she's like, no, 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 no. You're not going now <clears throat> during the day while she was holed up in her room, I was spiraling while I'm drinking and I'm like calling my friends and everything. And I'm, and I'm going to a dark place. And every single time that I, I like lost myself and I felt like I was going to be alone, I went back to that dark place. I went back to that time of depression when my wife left and it was just like, I didn't want to be there. And I was like, dude, no matter what I try, like I can't make my marriage work. The last girlfriend I had didn't work. Like this girlfriend, like I, she, we, at this point we became engaged. I was like, she doesn't love me. Like what the, f what is wrong with me? Like nobody loves me, you know? And I was like, I was spiraling and, um, uh, and I, I, I was becoming, I was like suicidal to be honest. And so, um, she's like, no, 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 let me take you. I'll drive you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't love me. You don't love me. Uh, you you want to leave. Oh, well, like I'll do it. And she's like, stop, stop. You're being ridiculous. And so I was like, Hey, look, like, here's the, here's the deal. And I'm trying to explain to her because I like I'm a verbose person and I don't mind sharing my feelings. So I'm trying to explain to her when she does these things and we get in a fight, what it does to me. And so, and I'm also still inebriated, by the way. So I'm sure, like, I'm I'm probably not making a lot of sense to her, but in my mind, I was making sense. So <laughs> she, you know, I'm telling her basically that when we get in those fights, when she would lash out and be like. I don't know. Can I curse on here? Yeah, All you right. can. Yeah. Okay. She would be like, fuck you. I'm out. Fuck you. I'm fucking gone. Like, and she'd just be like, and it was automatic. Even though I didn't want to be with her, it would automatically be like abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. Spring. Right. And I was like, explain to her, like when she does that, that it like, it sends my anxiety through the roof and my depression, I start to spiral. And when I spiral, like everyone's, everyone's 
anxiety and depression is different. I'm more uh, for my PTSD. I'm so used to being in a high stress environment and working high stress environments. So I'm like constant, my stress levels were like constantly high. Now, the good thing about that is that most things don't stress me out because I'm already like, I'm so used to high stress. But the bad thing about that is that things that do stress me out, I have very, very little room for me to before my cup overfloweth and I'm, and I'm spiraling. And so that just happened to be one of those things. And so, um, I'm trying to explain this to her that I was spiraling and, and my feelings and that I, I didn't want to be there like on planet earth. Like I was done, you know, and she just had to, she got this blank stare on her face and, and she responded with, well, why don't you go fucking slit your wrist then? Oh, wow. And that bro, that was, that was the moment. That was like the moment that like I hit rock bottom and I was like, that's the sign. That's it. Oh, wow. It's my time to go. So I walked away from her. We were like at the entryway of my, of our bedroom. I walked away from her. I went to my closet and I opened up, had a sliding, these sliding glass mirror doors. I opened mm-hmm. up the closet. I went inside. I grabbed my pistol, which was in a locked case. Um, and I grabbed my keys out of my pocket and I started unlocking it. And as I'm doing this, she's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm just ignoring her. And I'm opening up the case and she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa stop. What are you doing? And I'm like, open the case, pulling the gun out. And she's like, I'm calling the cops. And she runs out of the room and she starts calling 911. And I pull the gun out and it's got, I had like a, I had a lock that goes through the gun. It's like one of those wires that goes all the way through the pistol. So I unlocked it. I pulled it out and I, uh, cleared it. I put the clip in, loaded it. And then I stopped for a second. I was like, nah, she's, she's going to watch this. She wants me to kill myself. She's going to, she's going to see it. Like, so I, I go out to where she, she had run. We we're upstairs. And she ran across the landing into the room that was across the other side of the landing um, where her daughter was watching TV. It's like, like a playroom. And she locked the door. And I get to the door and I can hear she has 911 on speakerphone. And uh, I go to open the door and it's locked. And so I just literally just put my hand on it and pushed it really hard. And it slammed open. And it was like... It was like five seconds, which felt like an eternity, but it was like five seconds of insanity of her screaming. 911 operator is on the line. I can hear and they're like, we're sending police now. Her daughter screaming. And I got the gun to my head and I'm like, you want to fucking want to watch me fucking kill myself? Like I'm fucking screaming. Like it was just insanity. And like something snapped in me. And I was like, and I looked over and her daughter screaming was like looking at me screaming. And I was like, man, I'm going to, torment like they th- one they're scared of me they think i'm gonna hurt them i don't want to hurt yeah. them i, I want to kill myself but two they're f- like her dog was frightened and i was like I'm, I, this is wrong and so i stopped i did i closed the door i went downstairs and i went outside and i sat in a chair on my back patio and i called a buddy of mine i had the pistol on my lap and i was calling my buddy really close friend of mine uh him and i went to afghanistan together and uh he was still in the military at the time and he uh I was like, dude, it's done. I'm over. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I love you, bro, but I can't do this anymore. And he was like, what are you talking about, man? I was like, I, I explained to him everything. He was like, dude, it's fine. You haven't done anything. I was like, dude, the cops are on their way right now. And as I'm saying that, I can hear sirens in the distance. My cops are on the way. I can't, I'm not, no, I can't, I can't come back from this. And he was like, dude, you haven't, have you, have you fired the weapon? No. Did you hurt anybody? No. Did you hit her? No. You haven't done anything. Stop. You know? And as, as he's talking cop car after cop car, after cop car arriving at the house, it was like 10 cop cars. It was a shit ton. And they're getting, and they're getting on, on bullhorns and they're like, Gregory Birch, come out with your hands up. (laughs) Like in my neighborhood, bro, it was pandemonium. Yeah. Now I'm sitting outside on the other side of the house in the backyard, you know? And I'm like, bro, I don't know if I can do this. And he was like, dude, just go talk to the cops. And so I ended up going back inside. I was listening to him. He let me go. And as soon as he let me go, the cops called. 
And they were like, hey, where are you? I was like, I'm in the living room. I said, do you have the weapon? I said, yes. And they were like, well, go ahead and unload it, put it on the couch. And so I did. They said, come on out and let's have a talk. So I opened the door and dude, as soon as I opened that fucking door and I stepped out like this wave of emotion hit and I just started bawling, like ugly crying, bawling like a baby and this fuck couldn't see snot bubbles yeah. coming out. Like I was yeah. like uncontrollable, like heaving and I was dying and it was, it was insanity. And, and the, the cop, uh, you know, I left that front door up. I didn't even close it. I was just like in a, in a daze. And the cop looks through the front door and he sees that up above on the, on the wall above the TV, there was my guide on from my company command. And he was like, you're in the military. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, did you, did you serve overseas? Yeah. Did you, he's like, you, you get seen by the VA? I was like, no. And he's like, bro, you need to. You brought some shit back with you. You need help. And uh, he said, don't worry. We're going to get you help. We're going to get you taken care of. And so um, that was when I started doing counseling. And he, he took me to, uh, they took me to an inpatient facility, which I sat there. I didn't even get in processed. I sat literally in a waiting room for 48 hours waiting to get in process. Never did. They ended up releasing me to my sister, my older sister, who drove from Tennessee to Dallas, Texas, um, to come, to come, uh, take, take custody of me. Um, and she took me to the VA. I got my in processing down with the VA. I started getting seen by counselor. I went back to that ex-girlfriend or that girlfriend, that fiance. And I mm -hmm. just begged her to let me make it right. And to, I was going to go to counseling. I was going to get medication. I was do everything that I needed to do. I'm sorry. And so we ended up deciding to work through it. Um, which it didn't, it was, that was a waste for me to do that. It didn't work out, but, um, but, uh, was it really, sorry, I, I don't want you I to mean, stop the story. Cause this story is like, so like amazing. Like I'm blown <laughs> away by your story. Like this story is like so captivating. I just want to let you go, but it's, oh, like I appreciate <laughs> it. Was it was a it was a tough time bro it was it was i was rock bottom like in my mind i was in a fucking prison i was and i see i i, I see what you're saying i do i think it was right for me to make amends to do to take the steps to make amends but i did i did it for the wrong reasons i was doing it because i just didn't want her to leave oh, and she she still left okay how did you and, bounce back from that i mean that's like like I have my story and my listeners know my story and yeah. um, I bounced back over a span of a couple of decades and mm -hmm. I'm still trying to recover, but like, it seems like you got your pretty much your shit together. Like relatively. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, quick period of time. Well, that was in 2018. Um, so get this too, to add insult to injury while I'm, in, while I'm in the inpatient facility, this is in May. I have, I get custody of my kids because they're in another state because my, my ex-wife is married, remarried to somebody in the military and they move all over. So instead of me moving every single time I move, I stay one place and they move. And so, um, she, my, my fiance was friends of my ex-wife because we had all like, they'd met, you know, cause she's going to potentially be my kid's new stepmom. She calls my ex-wife and tells her what's happening. And my ex-wife is like, okay. She goes and she, she basically calls me. I, I was in there for maybe four hours. I had just gotten there basically. Mm -hmm. And I get a call and they're like, Hey, Gregory Birch. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, Hey, you got a call from somebody. So I answer the phone and they're like, it's, it's my ex-wife. It's Amanda. And she, I'm like, Hey, what's up? And she's like, Hey, I just heard what happened. You okay? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, Hey, well, just so you know, I just got a lawyer. And I put a protective custody order against you from the kids. And so um, they are not coming to see you. And I'm taking your custody. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, fuck me. You picked of all times right now. <laughs> right now. So call and tell me that. Like, I'm still, it's still the same day. Like, I still drink a half a <laughs> handle of Jack. It's still in my system. I'm still like, <laughs> I'm still like, <laughs> Like Holy half drunk. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> well, when it rains, it pours. And so I, I ended up going into a custody battle with my ex-wife that we battled until literally 
the end of uh, 2021 when it finally came to a close. It was like, it was actually, it was really like the beginning of 2022. So, wow. Um, wow. Dude. Yeah. Wow. And so I, uh, so she, I think when she left, when she, when, when her and I separated in October of that same year, we just, we ended up calling it quits. And I felt it was actually one of the hardest breakups I'd had. And it, and it was because when I, when I came back and I apologized, I meant what I said that I was profusely sorry about everything and I was going to do everything possible. And I did, I, I went to counseling. I started doing couples counseling with her. The couples counseling was like have, having us do practical exercises and read different things. I was reading them. I was like putting in the work and I was like, I'll do anything to make this right. And I was like, whatever you say, let's do it. And, um, it was still like with all of that work, she still, it still didn't work out. Still wouldn't. And she still didn't want to be with me after all that. And there was something about the rejection of being rejected. Like, dude, I, I did everything possible. And so, um, and I took it really hard. I took it personally. Right. And so even though it, it, in the long run, like her and I were not a good fit and, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but I took it so personally that at this time I was transitioning to another company, uh, another insurance company. And so I just transitioned and, um, and I was like, I'm gonna, like, I saw that quote around the time that it, when I broke up and, and I transitioned and it was like the best revenge is massive success. And I was like, I'm from, um, from uh, Frank Sinatra. And I was like, I'm just gonna fucking crush his insurance. Cause she didn't want to even want me to be in insurance. Cause I wasn't, I was okay, but I wasn't great. I wasn't making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to crush this so fucking hard. I'm going to make so much money that she's going to look back and be like, fuck, I messed up. Right. And that's, that's exactly what I did. I just threw myself into work. And so I found a passion for, I found a passion for sales. And I got really good at sales uh, and I sucked at first, but, but I ended up getting very good. Um, cause I just threw all of my energy into it. And, um, I got very serious and very disciplined about my work and, um, and through that, people, these, the, the insurance agents across the industry would like reach out to me and be like, dude, you're crushing it. What are you doing? And I would just teach them the things that I learned. And I would be like, well, tell me what you're doing. And I would break it out and say, Hey, well, th th this is not good. This is not good. Take those things out and do this, do this, do this. And, and I would coach them. And, and I had, a, I've, I've just from, I guess from the military and the way the military teaches, I just break things out very simply, you know, and that's just the way I teach. And so um, that was how my coaching kind of started was through sales coaching and, and agents over time would be like, dude, I want to come work with you because no one's ever coached me like this. Like anytime, like it's, and that's kind of the insurance industry. No one really knows how to coach and there's, um, there's no real leaders. They're just managers. And they'll be like, like, Hey, I'm having problems on the phone, setting appointments. And their answer will be like, we'll buy more leads, make more dials. And it's like, okay, then what? Then buy more. And, and make more dots. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, they, they don't, they, it's because they don't know what they're doing either. Right. They're not right. doing the work either. So I just happened to, to do the work and go through and get my face kicked in on the phones a lot until I got really good. So, um, but in the meantime, while I'm doing this, while I'm focusing work, right. And while I'm coaching these agents and while I'm really like, I'm doing it in, in, when you look at entrepreneurship, you get, you can use anything as fuel. Like at the time, my fuel was to prove my ex fiance wrong, was to make her want me back. Mm -hmm. Not that I wanted her back, but I wanted her to regret the decision of leaving. Right. Because I was angry. Right. And I wanted to prove it wrong. And so, and that fueled me, you know, initially. But at the same time, at the, at, while I'm doing this, I'm still relationship, 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 like bouncing between these women. And from the outside looking in, like anyone would be like, dude, that guy's crushing it in sales. He's making a lot of money. Like in 20, that was at the end of 2018 that we broke up in 2019. I sold, I sold a uh, $425,000 of insurance made $360,000 in the previous year. When I was with her, I sold about $75,000 and I made about 60. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so huge difference. Right. And I was just yeah, like, yeah. I was, it's like a multiple of five. 
you know, of how much more I made when I was away from her. And, um, and so the, from the outside looking in, it was like, man, that guy's crushing it. But to be honest, I was still depressed. I still had this void in my soul that I was trying to fill. I didn't want to be alone. And, um, it all kind of came to a head in 2020 when I had a, I had a girlfriend at the end of 20, through most of 2020 till the end. And it ended in a, in like in flames basically. And it was, it was more on her side where she was like the one freaking out mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much on me. Like I was with my ex fiance, but it, it, it wasn't any suicidal stuff, it, but it was, it was pretty bad. It was yeah. like super crazy. It's <laughs> like, I could write a book on it and you'd be like, holy shit, that happened. Yeah. Even more than what you just shared. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's even worse. <laughs> holy shit. So, um, so when her and I broke up, I was just like, man. Why does this keep happening to me? Right? Why the, what the fuck is wrong? And, um, and initially I started, I was, I was like, I'm just going to be single for a while. And I did it. I did it because I wanted to prove to her, to this, this girlfriend we had just broke. I said, really, like, I, I wanted to get her back, um, was like, I only want to be with you. Right. And, and so I was like, I'm not going to be with anybody else. But then that turned into a, a personal, development journey and um it was the longest time i'd been single my entire life and it was hard it was really 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 difficult and um i i just i i that's that was the moment when i started to realize like i was the problem that i was attracting this into my life because of me because of the actions i was doing and so i've always been very obsessed with uh, with the military and how the military can take people from all across the, the nation, from all walks of life, uh, every race, every religion, uh, male, female, doesn't matter. And they can break them down to the base and then they can rebuild them with discipline mm -hmm. uh, by controlling the environment, controlling how they, how clean they are, paying attention to detail, Controlling what they eat, controlling how much water they drink, controlling that they drink no alcohol, controlling that they, that they learn every day, controlling that they do physical fitness every day, controlling that they get up early, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like all down the line. But when you start to do these discipline actions, even over eight weeks, it literally transforms a person and makes them a different person. As long as they continue down that journey, the problem is the accountability piece. When you have a drill sergeant there that's making you do it, man, you'll do it. But when the drill sergeant leaves and you haven't really built a habit, and the problem is that most people go back to the old ways, right? Yeah. But when they first graduate basic training, they're different people. They become a different person. So I was like, how can I capture that essence and do that for myself? And so, um, you know, I was listening to this podcast and it was in February. It was February, 2021. And I had been, I started throwing myself into work again. That's all I always do when I get... After a big breakup, so I throw myself into work. I'm throwing myself in work. I'm doing this whole like marketing thing. I started doing podcasting. That's how I started podcasting. It was in 2021, and so, um, the the um, I was listening to a podcast, and I'm listening to this podcast, and it was the Real AF podcast with Andy Fusello, and um, this guy is is talking about doing 75 hard. And I knew about it and I tried it, tried, tried it, but I didn't really do it. And, um, he's like, dude, at the end of 75 days, like if you do it, he, and there, it was like, he was speaking right to me. Cause I tried it. I did it for like 20 days and I was like, I got it. Like I work out every day, blah, blah, blah. but I wasn't watching my diet. I was still drinking alcohol. I wasn't drinking the right amount of water. I wasn't reading. There's a lot of things I wasn't doing. And so. He was like, dude, if you don't do it the right way and you think you, oh, I've done it for like 20 days or so and I, I got it. He's like, you don't fucking got it, bro. You don't got it. Like at the end of 75 days, you're a different man. He was like, I was a different human being. I leveled up in every way possible. And so I was like, that's it. That's what I need. Because I was still depressed. Still like in my head, couldn't get over this person. And so I, uh, 
I started 75 hard like the next day. And it was the, it was the Sunday after, uh, thanks. It was Sunday after Valentine's day, 2021. And, uh, I was just committed to it and I did it and man, it, it did it changed my fucking life. It changed. I mean, I'm, I'm a different man today. I'm a different, I'm here today being able to tell this story, being vulnerable about it. Cause I didn't, I've never talked about this shit with anybody because mm-hmm. I was, cause I was ashamed because I was embarrassed. How similar is 75 hard to the military training that you experienced when you were, when you were serving? Oh, by the way, thank you for your service. I have a soft, I have a soft spot in my heart for, uh, for vets and for current, uh, active soldiers. So thank you for your service. Yeah, man. It's my pleasure. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Um, it, it's similar in the fact that it, it, it has, it has, um, measures built within for accountability, and, um, you know, in the basic training, you, like I said, you, you, you have to control what you eat because you can only eat what the food they give you. Right. Yeah. You have to drink so much. They force you to drink so much water a day. They're drinking. They're basically forcing you to drink a gallon of water a day. Right. That's, that's two things. You can't drink any alcohol. There's three things. You have to do PT every day. That's four things. And you have to do, they have training and they have reading that you have to do every day. Five things. So basically it's very similar. It's real similar. When you break it down, the only difference is that you in 75 hard, you have to take a progress picture every day. And then you have to do two workouts a day. One of them has to be outside. One of them, it doesn't matter. So, but one does have to be outside regardless of weather, regardless how hot it is, raining, snow, sleet, doesn't matter. You do it. And so, um, that's the only difference, but everything else is pretty similar. So it's, it's all based on discipline. And what it happens is that when you compound discipline action, Oh, day after day after day, it builds this confidence with you, within you. And then that confidence over time builds your mindset. It toughens your mindset. So the way that you speak to yourself changes and you stop, you start to identify with yourself in a much different way. So like I didn't identify with myself in the same way where I was like letting my thoughts control me, where I had to sit there and spiral and go out of control. I started getting a point where I was like, like another piece of me was coming in. Like, it's like almost like having, uh, the angel and the devil, right. Where the devil's like trying to get me to just spiral and let my, my ego thoughts kick in and just think about the past and wallow in it and be in pain and all this stuff. And then the angel's like kicking that shit to the curb and be like, no, get your, get get out of your fucking head and get to work. You got shit to do. And I just had shit. I had too many shit to do. And I was like, I can't, I don't have time to sit here and just like waste my time thinking about this bullshit. And, and it made it, it made us just a happier person. And so, um, and it was like phases that your mind goes through. Right. And, you know, when you first start, you, you kind of get elated and you're like, and I got elated. I was like, yeah, this is feeling great. Right. And then you have a little slump. And then it starts to go on cruise control. And then a, there's like one point, like at like day 40, when like, it's like, it starts to click and it's like, I've arrived. Like, like this is what, this is what it's all about. And you, your, your mind starts to get your, your mental and your physical state start to come into alignment and they're right. like growing together. And, and you start to like, everything starts to happen faster. Like your vibration rises you, uh, my, my sales started exponentially increasing and I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was doing anything different. Like I, I just started getting better out of nowhere. I started getting more and more sales like crazy. And I started, I crushed sales records in my company and, um, and it was, it was insane. And so I, I started doing, I started like accepting more out of life and, and some like, I watched the movie. Yes, man which is a great movie. And it's a great book. If you, if you, if there's, you know, if you're listening to this, if you haven't read the book, it's a great book. So, um, I watched the movie and I was fascinated with the concept of just saying yes to everything. So I was like, you know what? I, I don't do enough in life. Like I don't experience life. I'm gonna start saying yes to things. So my, my mentor at time was just like, okay. And he was like, well, you should go do this. And I was like, yep. He's like, you should go to this. Yep. And he's like, you should go to church. Yep. You should start tithing. Yep. You should do a podcast. Yup. And I just started saying yes to everything. And so I started going back to church and I was going to church consistently. I started tithing and, um, I was in church. It was maybe like the fourth or fifth week I was in church. And I'm like, 
I'm like full speed. Like I'm on autopilot now at this point and I feel great. And when you get to that point, your, your inner speech, you call out your bullshit really quickly. Like if you have a, like, if I had a thought by the way, to give an example, if I woke up in the morning and I was like, fuck, I'm sore. I don't want to go work out. And it, like immediately another thought would come in and be like, just for thinking that weak ass thought, now we're going to get up and do a fucking cold shower. And then you're going to go straight to the workout and you're doing an extra <laughs> bitch. And it was like, that's how it was. And it I was like it. another thought that's coming. Be like, oh, dude, you want to have weak ass thoughts? I'm going to fucking show you. Okay. Uh, get that man, shit out it. of here. And I was just like, I was like, like, that's how it was. So I'm in church. And, uh, you, you know, we're sitting there taking sacrament and I would, during sacrament, I always, I'd always repent and I always pray. And usually it's just bullshit. Like, Oh, I'm sorry for doing this this week. I'm sorry for doing that. And I could have done this better and blah, blah, blah. And I could have been a better Christian. I could have prayed more, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, this specific day I'm sitting there doing my whole rigmarole and like this voice comes in, like my boss voice comes in he was like, no, Greg, you've got more to repent for. And I started to like search within myself and like really dig in. And I was like facing everything I'd been holding on to. And I, and I went back to that previous relationship that I'd broken up with. And I thought about everything that happened, how I said, how I was saying it was like more on her side, how she was the one that was kind of acting crazy. Right. I looked at everything that I did and I, re I released everything that she did. It was like, that's immaterial because I can't control another person. What are the things that I did or the things that I could have done better? And I went through and I just, I, I chronicled them. I was like, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. This was a mistake. This was a mistake. And I started to take accountability for it. And I, and I accepted that I fucked up, that I was just as much at fault. And then I forgave myself. And I felt like this massive wave of relief. And, uh, that's after Sorry, oh, dude. It was, go ahead. I was just going to say, that's a very hard thing for a man to do for himself is to forgive himself. It's very, dude, it's very difficult. I was, I was weeping in church. I'm not even kidding. It was hard. It was really hard to like, because then I, I got done with that and I was like, that felt great. And I was like, I'm done. And that voice came back in. He was like, you're not done yet. And I went back to the next relationship and I went through all that. I thought about all the things I did. You're not done yet. I went back to the next relationship and the last relationship before that and the last relationship before that. You're not done yet. All the way back to my fucking marriage. And for so long, I would, and for so long, I was so pissed off that she cheated on me in my deployment that I justified the fact that I cheated on her because she was like, well, she fucking cheated on me in my deployment, which is still fucked up. Yeah. So it's oh, okay yeah. that I do this, but it's not okay. It's not. I could have, I was not a man. I could have been a man at that moment. And I could have said, you know what? I'm not okay with this, but we're going to fix it. And I'm not going to hurt you in order for me to feel better. We're going to fix it. And we're going to move forward healthily. Like, would I still have my family, my kids now? Possibly. Have well, you I fixed it? Different. Um, I mean, I've, I've accepted it. Her and I have a great relationship now. Okay. We have like, like for instance, when I go to, when I go to Tampa, they live in Tampa, Florida. When I go to stay with them in Tampa, like I stay in their house with them, with her and her husband. So, and then when the kids come here and they want to come, they come and stay with me. So we are we're very, we're very close, like all together family. So like her kids, they have two kids together and she has two more kids and, uh, they call me daddy Greg. So yeah very good so yeah we've we've we have fixed that and um but it took for me to take accountability and it was dude i sat there with, it seemed like it was like an eternity but going through all these fucking mistakes that i'd made and i realized the reason i'd been so unhappy the reason why i didn't want to be alone is because i even starting with my marriage was i had done some shit that was not okay and i didn't want to sit there and face it and I had done these actions that were not in line with the person that I knew myself to be in my heart. And when I faced those things and I released them and I took accountability for them and said, I fucked up 
and I, re- and I forgave myself. Now I could move forward unencumbered by all this baggage. I keep trying to carry with me and ignoring and this stuffing down in a fucking box and hiding off in a dark space in my mind. And, um, uh, it was, dude, it was difficult. And if I hadn't done all the work I was doing with all the, my, the, my daily disciplines of working out, of, of reading every day, of making non-negotiable tasks that I have to do no matter what, no compromises, I wouldn't have built the mental toughness and resiliency that was required for me to do that. And it changed my life. How do you know, um, how does somebody, let's say, who doesn't go to church, right? They don't believe in Jesus and they believe in something else and whatever. I'm not going to judge. I believe in Jesus, a huge Christian. I love my faith. Um, how does somebody who's taken that, like you just said, where you take in that, 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 um, that idea and you shoved it so far deep into that dark box mm-hmm. and you've completely forgot about it, but it's still there because it's still nagging you and you still feel something is not right. I'm not right. I, I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. How would you help somebody to, um, to bring that dark box? thing that happened to them in the past so far that they've forgotten how do you help them bring it back out to back out into the light so that they can see it and they can deal with it Mm -hmm. that's a good question um so through through my journey through my time in the military through understanding like how military training works through my own personal person my own uh personal development journey what i found was that um your 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 body your mind and your spirit are all intricately connected. Whether you're a religious person or not, it doesn't matter. You still have a spiritual side to you. And understanding the spiritual side is just your man's search for meaning. It's so ultimately like, what are we meant? To, what am I meant to be here for? What am I meant to do? What's my ultimate purpose? Right. And, and, uh, when you have your, all three of those and you let any of them go and you don't feed into it, it ends up being like an anchor to the other two. And sometimes people are only working on one and there are two are anchors, which really makes it to where the life is difficult. And so when you do discipline action and they do it with physical fitness, what that does is it increases both your phys- your mind and your body, but it does it in such a way that it creates a, a, a unique confidence within yourself and that confidence over time develops into faith. And that faith truly is just your inner reputation with yourself, your inner belief in yourself. And, and that reputation and that belief develops into your, your knowledge of understanding, like, I can do anything I set my mind out to. Which then is like, like a, another leap to, I can, like, finding your purpose and your passion which starts to link to your spiritual side and you start to do develop this whole new spiritual awareness of yourself because you have so much faith within yourself because you know you're the motherfucker that when you say you're going to do something it's going to get done because today 99% of people that are listening to this I can guarantee you they're not that kind of person because they make compromises because they're the person that's going to be like I'm going to get up at five tomorrow hit the snooze button, loss, hit the snooze button again, loss. I'm going to go start my workout tomorrow. Well, well, work called me and said, I got to come in early. I guess I'm not going to work out. Loss. Get up earlier. Find a way. Get up at five and get to the gym. Yeah. And so when you make those, and you may think like, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Because every single time that you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves the easiest. And I know that myself. And when I stopped lying to myself, when I started holding myself accountable, when I say I'm going to do something and I fucking do it, it's like depositing into that discipline side. And every single time I do something, I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it, dude, it takes with interest. Yes. Yes, it does. It takes with a lot of interest. Yes, it does. Those small compromises, 
oh, I'm going to start a diet and you don't start it. I'm, I can't, you know what? I'm not going to drink it more. And then you find out your, your friend's like, let's go out this weekend. And you're like, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I'm going to go to bed earlier and not going to binge watch some Netflix. And then next thing you know, you're laying in bed and they're frigging watching your 10th rerun of stranger things or whatever. <laughs> like, like dude, it happens. And I know I understand because all like everything around us is meant like it's designed. Your fucking phone is designed to suck you the fuck in. It is literally designed to do that, to make you lazy and incompetent and weak. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, so many talking points that I want to talk, touch up on yeah. with, with that, with that last yeah. one. Um, I, I agree with you a hundred percent that a man that cannot keep his word to himself cannot keep a, his word to anybody else. Yeah. But what it's, comes you gotta lead yourself first. You exactly. have to lead yourself first. Exactly. And, and so to answer your question, the original is like if somebody is like got something that's bothering them, dude, it, uh, for me, it always starts with let's get you physically in shape. Because I'm willing to bet if there's something physically mentally bothering them, they're not in the physical shape that they that they know they can be. They may not be fat, they may not be completely out of shape, but physically they're making they are yeah. making compromises. And so it's like, I don't need to, I don't need to turn you into like, uh, uh, Mr. Olympia, but dude, you should be able to look in the mirror and not be ashamed of looking at yourself naked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to look in the mirror and be like, I'm proud of like the work I put into that. Yeah. Like you're welcome, Greg. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it should be. And I, that's how I, and dude, I feel, I feel great about it. Like, and it's not, has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with like, being conceited or egotistical like it has nothing it's just this like i put in hard work and i appreciate it which gives me even more confidence which then transcends to my faith and my belief in myself because all these things are they're teaching me skills that are necessary in life and in business to be successful i know that i have to eat a specific way and i have to work out every single day and it's not going to be like i did it today i'm magically going to be awesome shape this took years of doing of working out and, and diet and nutrition yes. to get to me to where i'm at now and it's like that was a lot of delayed gratification that was a lot of like mm -hmm. oh putting off alcohol putting off eating shit food when everyone else is doing it and now when i look at it dude don't get me wrong i'd love to shove my face in a pizza bro i'd love to i'd love to <laughs> shove my face in some doritos some oreos and like sit there and watch netflix all day that would be fantastic for me but I know that if I do that, that I'm going to be a fat piece of shit. And I would rather, I like being <laughs> in shape. I like going places. I like literally last night I was with my girlfriend and we went out and we went to go grab some food and every single place that we went to, people literally came up to me and they were like, dude, dude, bro, you are massive. Like, look at those arms, bro. Like, <laughs> Like, dude, <laughs> and she was like, she was like, everywhere you go, it's like, you're a celebrity. Like, and like literally everybody comes up to me. She was like, do you like it? I was like, I don't really care. Like, it doesn't get to my head or anything. I, I, cause for me, I like what I always tell them I, as I like this kid came up to me and he was skinny and I was like, bro, I used to be skinnier than you. And he was like, no way. And I was like, yeah. And I pulled up my phone and showed him a picture. I was like, that was me. He was like, shit. I was like, dude, if I can do it, you can do it. So if you want to look like this, you can do it. You just got to get to work, man. And so I always want to inspire that kid. Hopefully that inspires that kid to go to the gym and like change his body and change his mind and change his life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I always try to like spin it to like inspire other people. Like, Hey, like I'm not special. I'm not, I'm not, there's nothing special about me. I just did the work. That's it. And so, and a lot of people are like, who hey, do you coach? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I coach. And I'm like, here's my card. And I'm like, I got an NFC card. And I'm like, hey, go go check out my website. Go look me up and we'll we'll uh, we'll connect. But um, you know, it's it's something that if I, through all of this, I, I I found my passion because people started like reaching out to me. They're like, dude, you're like a different human being. What's wrong? What's going on with you? And I was like, like I just went through a transformation and this is the most fucking miraculous thing I've ever been through in my life. Like I'm telling you, like I, I felt, I felt like unstoppable. Like I was superhuman. It was Very crazy. Cool. Very cool. Um, I so, wanted to ask you, um, 
um, what do you think comes first? Some uh, a man's word or a man's purpose in life? Ooh, his word. His word comes first. Yeah. You're not going to be able to find your purpose, to be honest. You're just not. Like, if you're... It, if you don't have integrity, like there's a, there's a lot of underlying issues. If you don't have integrity with yourself and with others and it, integrity starts with yourself first, because when you start being, you start being true to yourself, you will. And here's the thing. It all starts with yourself. Love comes from within. Integrity comes from within. Leadership comes from within strength, power, everything, everything that you need is all within you. Right. And I'm not even, I'm not even like fucking kidding. I'm being serious. When I stopped trying to seek out love in everywhere and I started, I started finding it like loving myself because I knew I was the kind of person that kept my word and I had a good reputation with myself. I started seeing love everywhere. I started giving love to everyone and it's abundant. It's completely different. And so that's how I found my passion was through that, but I had to keep my word to myself. Interesting. What if a man is not used to keeping his word, but he knows he needs to keep his word and other men point it out to him that, that can, that can trigger a man into a lot of, into a very negative, very bad spiral. It can, it can. How would you coach some, how would you help a man understand that his word is everything? without like triggering them to the point where it's like, fuck you. I don't want to deal with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. Get out of my life. Um, so with when I do my coaching, I use a lot of the Socratic method. And what I, what I mean by this, I, I ask a lot of questions. I'm very much like, like I, I, I do it like kind of like how, you know, Jesus just asks a bunch of questions yeah. in the Bible. That's all he does is he just asks questions. I do the same thing. I ask, I listen I, I listen to everything to say, and then I start asking questions and I'm doing specifically honed questions that gets them to come up with the answer. So it's coming from them, not from me. And then they're like, and then they have these epiphany moments like, oh man, I didn't even yeah. think about that because they haven't been asking themselves the right questions. And that's all our thoughts are. Our thoughts are just a series of questions and answers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just asking a different set of more courageous questions that's getting them to think about it, putting them in an emotional state and then saying, you know, what are you going to do about it? I want to do this. Okay. Well, here's the path. Mm -hmm. Boom. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, deadlifts or cardio had to ask. <laughs> that was what i love bro i had don't know i've been doing so like i just got down to the gym right before we started recording and so my gym workout today was was a smoker i did uh uh i did a mile and a half on the treadmill and then i would jump off i would do two exercises four to five sets each jump back on the treadmill for a mile and a half like a run like a full-on run like i'm doing i'm keeping i'm maintaining like a seven to six and a half to seven minute mile pace jumping off doing two more exercises, jumping back on. So I did four sets of that. So I did, ended up doing six miles and then, um, and I did a whole body circuit. So like first two exercises were legs, next two exercises were back and thighs, next two exercises were chest and tries, and last two exercises were shoulders and abs. And so it was a smoker. Um, but I, I do like doing cardio, um, just because heart health, you know, and yeah, great great for burning fat, you know, as long as it's not too much, like a lot of my cardio, honestly, is like really brisk walking and, and I do a lot of pushups. So I do a thousand pushups a day. So I'm not even kidding. People say, if people hear me say that and they're like, no fucking way. And I'm like, <laughs> I started, I, I started at 200 a day by doing, by doing 10 sets of 20. Like it, when you break it up like that, you're just like, oh, I could do 10 sets of 20. Like, could you do 20 pushups an hour? every hour for 10 hours in the day, like everybody could do that. Just about every man could do that. Yeah. 20 pushups is not hard. And I just did it consistently every single day for a week. And at the end of the week, I upped it from 200 to 250. And then I did that for a week and it went from 250 to 300, then 300 to 350 X, Y, Z all the way up to a thousand. And I was just like, I got to 350 and I was like, I wonder how far I can get. I'm going to get to 500, got to 500. I was like, this isn't that bad. I'm going to get to 700, got 700. I'm going to get to a thousand, got to a thousand. So 
now I, I do a thousand pushups every day, but it keeps nice. me, it keeps me like, it's keeps me really lean. It keeps my, it keeps me really vascular. Um, my strength's super high. My endurance is super high. Like it helps everything. So that's good. Uh, I, um, what I pushups is part of my morning routine, but I haven't done my morning routine in months. Oh yeah. Something I got to get. Morning routines doing. are important, bro. I know they're, they're critical. They're, it's like my mom says, like you, you, you are the rest of the day, the way you started. And if you start off a shitty day, a shitty way, your whole day is going to be shit. So morning routines is one way just to start, have everything good impact, good start, good high energy. Something Absolutely. I got to get started again. Highly recommend a good morning routine. Highly recommend it. We are coming close to the end of the show. Yeah, this has been a banger of a show. I'll tell you right now, this has been <laughs> one of those shows where I didn't want to end it. This is just so much that I wanted to talk talk to you about, and it's just your story and everything that we were getting into is just next level. Um, these are the seven or eight questions I ask all my guests, and I want to ask you these questions. Like lightning round, real quick. Sure, we can okay. do a lightning round. Okay, <laughs> I'll I'll try to breathe through them. <laughs> Uh, with the increase in people suffering from depression from the last two to three years that we've been living through, through this uncertainty and all this nonsense, mm -hmm. what would be the one thing that you could tell them to keep their hopes up? Um, so, oh, this is great. This is great. I got a small story. So, uh, when that, that, that fiance broke up with me, I do, I was fucking crushed. I was working, a, I was working a, 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 a job and doing insurance at the same time. because I was trying to bring in more income because I lost her income and I was fucking struggling. And so I was at this job, um, I was getting paid fucking pennies and, um, there's this guy that I did training with and him and I were outside, he was smoking a cigarette and this one specific day, she came by the office to come get the keys. Cause she had to go get something from the house. Cause she has all of her shit in my house. And so I saw her and it fucking crushed me. And, uh, it was like after lunch and, I, she left and I was sitting out there with him and I was like, I can't go back inside. I fucking can't go back inside like and, and stare at that computer screen. I got to go. Like, can you tell the boss? Like, fuck, I'm not, I gotta take the rest of the day off. He's like, I got you, bro. And I was just like, he could tell that I was, he could tell that I was dying inside. Mm -hmm. And, um, I used to, I used to get in my car and I would like listen to music that reminded me of her and I would cry like a bitch. And so I literally like was walking back to my car and I was already knowing I'm going to listen to this song and it's, it's already playing in my head and I was crying getting in the car. And when I got in the car, he texted me and he said, the night is always darkest just before the dawn. Dawn is coming, Greg. So the night's always darkest just before the dawn. The part, the, the part that you, the position of that, that everybody's having a, that, that tough time, right? And the place that you're in right now, you can get through it. And there's somebody out there that needs you to show them how to get through it. And to tell your story. What's the one thing that you do daily that amplifies your ability to stay focused? Meditate. hundred percent. And if there's you, a lot of people that be like, I can't meditate. I can't quiet my mind. I promise you. It's like, it's like riding a bike. If you never rode a bike before and you try to get on the first time. You're like, I can't ride a bike. I don't know how to balance myself. Yeah. Because you've never done it. You just got to do consistently. The more you do meditation, the more you can quiet your mind, the better you get. It really does help. It's, it's transcendent. Yeah. Yeah. I know Steve Harvey actually says that, uh, praying is speaking to God and meditating is listening to God. So it's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, if you could pick up the phone right now and call yourself at 20 years old, what would you tell yourself? Start reading every single day. Here's the, here's the first 10 bucks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Looking back, Re you reading daily is communication is probably the biggest thing that will make or break someone's success. And that's yeah. the ability to read or ability to, to uh, write effectively and to be able to speak effectively. And the best way that you can learn to do both of those is to read daily. You learn new, you learn new uh, words, you learn how different word tracks right? Mm -hmm. And it increases your, your conceptualization, your creativity. 
And I'm talking reading, not listening to an audio book. Don't be lazy. Actually read. Grab yeah. an actual physical book and open it. Yes. Uh, looking back, would you change anything? No. No. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I'm today. Very cool. I was, I was, I was meant to do those. I was meant to make those mistakes. Yeah. I was, I was meant to learn those lessons. Yeah. What scares you? I used to say failure, but now failure actually, I, I embrace. I, I, I like failure now because it means I'm learning and I'm growing. Um, that's a good thing. Um, honestly, I think what scares me the most is the time that I've spent away from my kids because uh, we live in two different states and, uh, thinking about them growing up and like not wanting to have a relationship with me scares the shit out of me. Like, like it, it, it makes me want to fucking mm -hmm. cry sometimes. I'm just like, Oh, my boys, <laughs> my girls, you know, like, like I love my kids dearly. So um, and that's why I, I go, I go out there and visit them once a month, every month. And, and then they come, they still come for summers and stuff like that. So where do you see Delta fit in the next five years? Um, man, um, honestly, the way that we're growing, I wouldn't be surprised if I have, um, I, I kind of see it growing to the same that other fitness companies where I, I would like to have like a facility as I grow, like create a facility and almost doing like a mock boot camp where I can like bring people in for a week and put them through like a hell week of like challenges, really test them, test their mind, test them physically, test them spiritually, teach them, um, and, and get them to like, when they graduate, when they come out, you know, as long as they don't quit, that they're like a different human being. It's like, you know, this most stressful, most stressful week of their life, but it's also the most gratifying and the most, you know, eye-opening experience where they, they find out the most about themselves. They really dig deep and they see what they're made of. That's, I would love to, to create that. Dude, if you ever create that, uh, just, just know like, I'll be one of the first ones to go through that because I love physical, um, physical torture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's something about it, bro. Like it, when you put yourself in physically demanding positions, you find out what you're made of. It's, it's really true. Like, it's like it, you find your next level, you find the next you You're like, I can't believe I actually fought off five five guys, three of them with knives and one of them with a gun. And I actually walked out of it, walk, walked yeah. out of it. I yeah. might've been cut up a little bit, but I saw I'm still walking. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, that's your spot on. Uh, how about you personally? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, well, the, my, the girlfriend I'm with right now, we, we, um, have been together for, almost two years and then we split up for a little bit and we took some time apart and um and then we, we reconnected and we got back together and so um but it's been very just like the second time through um it's been fantastic you know um and one of the most wonderful people just the most beautiful souls i've ever met in my life and so i know in my heart that i'm gonna marry her and uh, I'd like to be starting a family with her and she's doing her own. She's also a coach and she's doing her own coaching. And um, I'd like to just create something massive with her. And she wants to build her own gym and her own facility. And, and so um, she's got her own plans that she's building towards. So uh, I would like to like have that shared vision with her and, and just be living with her and enjoying her life. Very cool. Uh, where can people find more about you? The best place is going to be my Instagram. So go to, yeah, I'm at Gregory A. Birch underscore G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-A-B-I-R-C-H underscore. Um, you can go check out Debt to Fit Life. Uh, I have everything on there. You can check out, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Um, and then you can also check out, I have a podcast where it's called the Be the Difference podcast, where I talk a lot about this kind of stuff with different people. So you can check that out. It's on Apple, Apple Spotify, YouTube. So.
Very cool. And I will post all the links that you sent us with the show yeah. notes so everybody has easy access to uh, you and all your content. Uh, any final thoughts? Um, you know, there is uh, potential is unknown. Our, everyone's potential is unknown and unlimited. So I don't care where you're at in life. I don't care what you're doing on a daily basis. I don't care if you're like, well, you don't understand my situation. I'm telling you that if Elon Musk can put a fucking Tesla on the moon, <laughs> <laughs> that everybody that's listening to this can achieve some great shit in life. And I think if we all did that, if we all pushed ourselves every single day to be just a little bit better, that we would have a much better world. And so don't ever think that this doesn't apply to you because this applies to every single fucking person that's listening to this. Very good. Very good. Greg, thank you so much for sharing your story. It was phenomenal. It was I phenomenal. I, I didn't want it to end. Like, honestly, I appreciate um, what you're doing and what, and what you've been through and how you're helping people is so needed not just because of the planet pandemic, not because of the lockdowns, not because of anything. We've been dealing with these feelings for such a long time as men and mm. uh, not having someone to fall, not, I wouldn't say fall back on, but someone like as a, as a North star kind of thing to say, okay, well, Greg's been through all this crap in his life and he got, he got out of it on the other side. Maybe I can, uh, mimic some of the stuff that he did. And this is why I created the, this is why I created the fitness oracles to bring men, men on like you to share your stories, to share to other, to other men out there saying, you know what, dude, you're not alone. You're not alone. Sure. You're not uh, you're absolutely right. So thank you so much for coming out and sharing your story and being that source of inspiration for other men. And that model for us to follow. Thank you so much for that. You're, so, you're very welcome. I appreciate you taking the time to have me come on. And thank you so much. Well, we're going to have you on again. again. <laughs> we're going to have you on again because we got none of the questions that I had written up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so going through hard times is just a test. What you need to know is that when you get out of whatever you're going through, you will be stronger than ever before, and you don't need to go through it alone. Always know that you are not alone. Stay tuned for more real people with amazing stories that are just like yours. Until then, to everyone out there listening, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you may be in this crazy world. Hey guys, John from Resilient Reboot Productions and the Fitness Oracle. I just wanted to thank you for watching this episode and I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell and share this episode if you are watching this on YouTube or on Rumble. If you are listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker FM or whatever streaming service that you may be using, please give us a five-star rating and a positive review as it will help us reach out to more people that are suffering from mental health issues. Now, if you haven't done so already, um, I am offering access to a free weekly newsletter that we send out every Sunday and it would, and it's jam-packed with podcasting tips and health and wellness tips to keep you balanced um, in the podcasting and content creating space. So if you haven't done so already, sign up to this free newsletter it's uh, it's totally free, and it also gives you access to the uh, the Fitness Oracle private community in Mighty Networks, where we talk about this episode. We talk about how to implement, how you have implemented these uh, lessons that you've picked up in your life and how it's impacted your life. And we are working on a lot of great other um, um programs and and uh, support systems for you guys to be able to uh, to access. So if you haven't done so already, sign up to the newsletter and uh, I'll see you guys on the inside.